let's talk about Google Classroom today. So I'm going to give a brief walkthrough of Google Classroom, just the basics and how to set it up and how to use it most effectively, especially um, if you're doing a one to one or e-learning type situation. So this is my my main classroom. If we come over here and go to classes, this is going to show me every class that I have or that I'm a part of. So these three lines, that's another example of a Google roadmap. So classes, I can see what classes I have. So I'm going to be using my one to one e learning class as my main example today. Um, so starting with the basics, if you wanted to create a class, you would go to googleclassroom.com and it would pull up this panel and you see in the upper right corner, create or join a class. So this is where as a teacher, I can create a class. Um, your school may have a naming convention for Google Classroom. I do recommend that they are named consistently, but go ahead and name your classroom. You can pick your subject, your section, your room number. It's really helpful in larger schools. So that's how you make one is right here through the plus sign. So now I'm going to go into my e-learning class and we have a header. Um, I have a tutorial on how to make these headers if you're interested. Um, they just personalize it and I think it makes um, the classroom look a little bit brighter and more fun. So on this main panel, you're going to have your class code. If you hit the box, it makes it bigger. So this is great, you know, a way to get the kids to join. Have that up day one, join my Google Classroom. If they type that in, they automatically get linked into your classroom. The other things you'll see on your header is the meet link. If you had that turned on, I'll show you how to turn that on later. And you'll also see how to upload and change your photos for your, your cover. If you click the arrow, it adds your subheader or you can hide your subheader. So that is the cover screen. Down here, we'll show any work that is due. So to have work show up here, you need to assign it through classwork. This is your stream. You have some stream options I'll show you later. I have it cut on to show details. So this is the main stream. In my opinion, this is not the most important page, right? Students will come here to join your class meet. Um, and that, that's about it. Maybe to see a, an overview of what work is due, but that's, that's about it. Um, about the class meet, the reason this is um, smart to use is this is designed to be a classroom. So I really think about the Google Classroom being your physical classroom. And when you go to, go to teach, you go to work, you go to class, you unlock and lock the door. So under settings, I can find the meet setting right here. So class is over. We just had our meet. I'm going to lock my door. I'm going to reset my code. I'm going to save. So I do this after class is over. As long as you're the last teacher, the last person to leave the meet, then the meet does not exist anymore. So a good way to do that is to actually use the, the kick out feature to exit students out. Bye, exit out, exit out. So now look at that. My meet code is gone, right? So now it's time for me to teach my online lesson. So I come and I unlock my door, save. And I have the students trained. They know that when it's, you know, Tuesday at 10, they come and click right here to join our class for the day. So I do, I kind of compare that to unlocking and locking the door. All right, so classwork. Classwork organization is very important. So the first thing you wanna think about doing is creating a topic. So when you create a topic, that puts it over here and right here. So I know that this that we're doing formative today. So I'm going to click on formative and it pulls up my work for formative. Now you can change the order though, which is very important. Um, so if you do them, if you name them in a certain way, like unit one, unit two, then whatever, they're going to stay in order all year. You don't have to worry about it. But if you decide that you, oh man, you know, now that this is e-learning, um, I want to move this to the tippy top. If you grab your topic, click and hold, you can move it. I spent a very long time arranging these topics, so I'm not going to move them. So you see, I moved e-learning to the top, and now Google Meet is second, because that's the second most common thing my teachers need help with. And then I have Google Classroom, and then Cami. And I kind of um, arranged them in order of where I kind of felt like teachers needed the most support. 
So you can have a naming convention like unit one, unit two, or just remember to drag and drop them so that your current unit is the one that appears up top. So that's creating a topic, very, very, very important. And then you can also create assignments. So any assignment will have a due date on it and that will show up and link in with the student's calendar. So that's really handy. So I can do an assignment. If you have a CAMI license, you can do a CAMI assignment. We can do a quiz, a question, or a material. Okay, or you can reuse an old post. So this is really helpful for maybe like an exit ticket. You don't have to reinvent the wheel each time. So an assignment, I do my title, I do my instructions, and I can add any media here. So I can add something from Google Drive. Maybe I want them to um, annotate um, questions on a PDF, or maybe I want them to, to pop into a Google form. Maybe I want to link to another website like USA Test Prep or Formative. You can put that link here. Maybe it's a file from my computer. You can add that here. And maybe it's a YouTube video. You can add that here. I will show you the YouTube link really quick. Make sure that when you go on here, you're clicking the share button and getting that link. A lot of teachers make a mistake and try to share this main link. So I post it in and there's my video. You have to click on the video, just like meet sharing. You have to click on the window to share to get it blue and then you hit add. You can also do a URL here um, of the video as well. But the video search is the easiest way. And now you come over here. This is very important. You decide what classes it's for. So I can assign to more than one class. What students it's for. Maybe you're doing small groups. So you have different students and different activities. I love that you can do that through Google Classroom. How many points is it worth? Or is it ungraded? What's the due date? What's the topic? Is there a rubric? And do you want originality reports? You may get a little overwhelmed with the reports, especially if um, you are having them copy and paste from the internet. I would probably only cut this on for essays or for tests. If you did for every assignment, that could get a little tedious on the reports there. And so when all this is filled out, I can hit assign or I can hit the arrow down and do schedule. So that's assignment panel. All right, quiz assignment. So same thing, it automatically is gonna make you a blank Google form. OK, you can toggle over here to put it on locked mode, meaning the students cannot go away from this form as you're taking it. You title it, you give instructions, optional, and then you go and edit your quiz. Same thing over here. Give a due date, give a topic. You can click on originality reports, especially if part of it is short answer. So this locked feature on on Google Classroom is very important for quizzes. So coming down to question. So this is more of like a chat board type thing. Um, maybe if you had them watch a video, you say come to Google Classroom and answer the question. So sort of back in old school Google Classroom, you'd want to do this on the stream. But this actually keeps it more contained and holds each student accountable for an answer. So you ask the question, you pick the answer type, you can add materials if you want to, and same thing. So students can reply to each other. I love that option. I, I, I want them to chat and I want them. So I normally would say, you know, what is the theme of this poem? Please write your response and then reply to at least two other students with feedback. You can attach a due date to it and you decide who it's for. Um, students can edit their answers. I usually keep that off just because I would rather them post another answer if they've had an aha or realize their original one was wrong. I would rather them post, oh, wait a minute, I see now you know, I, I like to see that thinking. And then you have material. So most of my things on here are materials, as you see. So this is when it's not an assignment. This is just something they're going to use. So maybe it's a rubric. Maybe it's project directions. Maybe it's a video you want them to watch, but you don't want to embed any questions. So that's where material comes in. Materials are not going to post to their calendar. Anything else has a due date, so it will post to their calendar, right? So to me, that's the biggest difference. Um, it gets really confusing, I think, to students when you post a material as an assignment because then they think they have to turn it in, right? So if it's something they're not going to turn in, then it just needs to go under material, okay? So that is the main features um, of your class panel. Um, it also has a link to your Meet and to your Google Calendar and to your Class Drive folder. I don't think... This is nice. The other two I don't use as much, but as a student, I'd probably use Google Calendar. All right, so people. 
This is where you can add other teachers and then you can invite students right here. So obviously the code is great, but the student has to do it. Some students just aren't. So you could choose, hit the people icon and type in the student's email and that's gonna link them in. So that's a great option there. So this is your people panel. And then grades, I love this. I love that this is a backup grade book for me. So as a teacher, I would, I mostly, I gave back all my grades in Google Classroom. Even if they didn't turn it into me on a piece of paper, I still assigned it through Google Classroom. So, it, so it showed up on their calendar. I put all the instructions in Google Classroom. And then when I sat down to grade, I would grade through the classwork panel. So I would hit on the assignment and I would hit the turned in and I would, I would sit there and grade their assignments. And then I would give them their score. This is ungraded, but I would give them their score and I would return it. Click return. And then all these other students who still haven't done it, I would select all at once and then send them a message saying, hey guys, don't forget to turn in your Panda Tech assignment. I can go back and refer to the instructions here. What did I ask them to do? And then I see the student work here. So all my students were on one panel. If they didn't turn it in, it says missing. Now students do have to go through and select turn in. So this is a great place to get feedback because when I do go to return, I can type a message to my student. Wow, great work like always, right? You can give them really good feedback here. Whenever you click on it to open it, obviously you're gonna open open their document. So this is how it looks. When I'm going to grade this, I can look through all the students and then I can give feedback to the student using notes. Okay, great work. And the student will see that. And then when I'm ready, I can return. So I can return just this submission or if I'm gonna use this panel and click down my whole classroom, I can return multiple submissions or just keep it easy, hit return. You can also type some private comments here and that's going to show up in a different spot. This is going to show up on the assignment. This is going to show up in their Google Classroom. So two different reasons. I think for editing purposes as, an, as a former English teacher, this was more helpful to me because I could highlight what was wrong and I could give specific feedback. But this is where I would add my overall comment. But if you're doing like a quiz or something that doesn't require as much editing, then you might only use private comments. So those are the options. Again, you can click down here and grade more than one within this same panel. So that is how you, how you grade the homework. So again, to find this, we'll just go back from the stop top. We go to classwork. We find the assignment we want to grade. I'll choose a different one. And then we just click on it, turned in. And now I can give a grade. Right, and you can put the grade in here as well. Click on my student I want to grade, click on their assignment, it opens the new panel, and then I can enter the grade here. Again, we can put comments just like we can on a Google Doc. So this is actually a PDF. This is a slightly better example. And then when I'm done, I hit return. Easy peasy. So we've gone over classwork people grades. Grades is just your grade book, obviously, you'll see that here. If I see a student is missing something, I can view the submission or I can override the grade. Maybe they emailed it to me on accident and I'm not going to be a stickler. I'm just going to grade it from the way they gave it to me. I can give them that 90. So you can actually click on the individual students and get a few options. So view sub submission, right? So you do get a few options there and the option to overwrite. So when I would say that I would assign everything through Google Classroom, when I would sit there and have a, an assignment that was maybe turned in physically, this is where I'd come to input those grades. All right, so last thing, I'm just gonna show you on a student end. So the student's gonna come to their roadmap and hit on classroom. So when I pop into this classroom, we see that it has some due dates here, upcoming activities under classwork. Um, we do have a quiz that's assigned, that's nice. She used formative. So this is missing for the student. So if I view assignment, here is his copy of the document. And that is what they would turn in. So hit turn in. If he was confused, he can write a private comment here. So that's the basic overview of Google Classroom. I hope this is helpful. And if you have any questions, just let me know.